Welcome everyone, I think we're live sitting today once again in Taiwan with Moritz in Berlin. What's going on Moritz? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Cool, that's going to be awesome. So take a few seconds while people are joining us and if you guys join us, comment in the chat. It's going to be whatever side of the screen it's going to be in, but that's going to be useful if you want to ask a question and comment and we'll make sure to answer your question all the time throughout the live. We'll do kind of an interview as we do usually. It's going to be a follow-up interview because Moritz wants us in the podcast earlier. But uh, yeah, to tell, take a few seconds, Moritz, maybe a minute to introduce yourself, tell people what you do and what you're about in Europe these days. All right. So yeah, I'm from Germany. I'm 30 years old now and I've been trading for quite some time. Um, I'm running tradesciety.com together with my business partner, Rolf. And we also run edgewonk.com, which is a trading journal software. And besides that, I have been a day trader and Right now, I'm transitioning to swing trading and position trading because uh, I need more time for myself, my family, my friends, and our businesses. <laughs> we have tons of plans right now. And um, I was living in Asia for uh, seven years, roughly. And right now, I'm, I moved back to Germany because we are going to open an office location here. And so I will be here for quite some time and I hope in the future I will live six months in Hong Kong and six months in Germany because we want to split our offices between those two cities and uh, yeah I hope that works out. Love it. So all people have kind of a, a background of the countries you've been going to and traveling to while having a job and while trading. So you've been I know you've been first I think to China which is yes. not the best place to be when you want to trade <laughs> or whatever work. So, so how did that like transition to in Asia? Uh, well, in China it was okay because back then when I was there, most VPNs were still working. Right? I yeah. mean, you need a VPN, but Dropbox wasn't blocked yet. Google was still working, so <laughs> it was a different world. I mean, now they blocked almost everything, all all the social media, the search engines, and so on. So it's it's getting kind of tough. But I still love China. I, I'm going back there often. Um, yeah, in the other places in, in Hong Kong, I mean, it's perfect. You've got light speed internet and no problem at all with working. And um, yeah, but the best infrastructure I ever had in my whole life is of course here in Germany, because everything is working 24 seven, no problems at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a pretty, yeah. pretty big transition though from Asia to Europe or Europe to Asia, but yeah, love it, yeah. love it. We have a question here from Gregory. So what's Gregory? What's your favorite book? My favorite book on trading or general, I guess, on trading. That yes. would be... Yeah, go with both. So a trading book and then a non-trading book because that's going to kind of vary a lot, I guess. All right. So a trading book that must be Edwards McGee. Um, it's, it's based on Richard Schabacher's work from 1929. It's about classic uh, chart patterns, analysis of stock trends, right? That book is simply if you want to trade classic chart patterns and with a with a like they really present the whole topic in a very concise way. And if you want to trade classic chart patterns, which still work today, then that is your book. And it's my all time favorite on 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 that topic or on trading. And um, non trading book is, is oh, it's a tough one. It's changing all the time. I, I read a new book. Uh, one month and I think it's the best ever and then I read a new book after that and it's even better <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I think if I had to choose it would probably be Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand yeah. or Fountainhead yeah both both pretty much love it we'll, we'll link them below after that and yeah. so what we want to talk about is I'm super excited for that we want to talk about kind of uncommon ways to succeed in trading and it's good to want to like succeed in trading by reading about trend lines and patterns and stuff. But I think there's much more to it, much more behind that we don't necessarily talk about sometimes. And yes. so Mark is a big fan of productivity, health and fitness, and all these things around that yes. we can do to become better traders. So I want to ask you first, if we were to look like let's say outside the technical trading or outside just charts, what do you think would be the thing that helped you most to become a profitable trader and trade full time? Um, simply being organized. <laughs> Love it. And Love it. You, you, you start that with, uh, you can start slowly with um, to-do lists, like 
if you don't use to-do lists, in my eyes, you're you're doing a lot of things very wrong, because as a trader, you have to make a lot of decisions every day. And if you get up in the morning and you still have to think about, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and so on, then it takes a lot of your brain power away, which is also one of the reasons, for example, why a lot of um, successful people wear the same clothes every day. <laughs> and because this decision fatigue, right? So I look at my checklist or my to-do list in the morning. I have I use Wonderlist. I have a um, category for each day of the week. So today is Tuesday. I look at my to-do list. It tells me what to do, <laughs> and I do that. And until I'm finished, I follow it blindly, right? Because it's a process I have refined over the years, and it helps me save a lot of time. It helps me um, use my brain for the more important things. My whole trading is organized there, when to look at which watch list and when to scan which market and so on. Everything is in there. And it makes my life way easier. I can finish a lot more work in a much shorter amount of time. And then I have free time, right? Because structured time is just as important as unstructured time for creativity. Trading is also about creativity. Yeah. So if you want to start with being more productive, start using a to-do list. Start slow. Just write down um, Monday, scan the markets. Tuesday, scan the markets. And then you add another point. Monday, after scanning the markets, enter trades into your channel, and so on. And you can slow build the process and refine it all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it. And the cool thing is that to-do list, like the things you have on your to-do list are going to depend on what level you're at, what you work on, what business maybe you have. But yes. so if you are a beginning trader or let's say a trader was not profitable, what would have to be on your to-do list absolutely to be able to make progress and grow? Um, it would have to be trading related first. It depends on your trading style, of course. If you are a day trader, then session preparation first. Um, looking at the news that come out that day, high impact news first. Then uh, maybe do a meditation, practice a different session preparation things. Then trade. After trading, enter trades into your journal, review, stuff like that should be on your to-do list. And the thing about the human brain is um, you get a dopamine fix every time you click something <laughs> on your to-do list. And a winner list is nicely designed like that like you click on uh you click on an item and it makes ping and then it gives you this dopamine boost right and it just feels really good so <laughs> like it's a awesome. game it's perfect yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the other cool thing about to do is the fact that you get to develop kind of this i don't know if i want to say addiction but kind of this Kind of this organized like this mindset of focusing on like daily habits and things you do, you, you do daily and I think yes. a lot of people who want to succeed in trading, they can do things daily and start to see results over time, right? Yes. So it's not about like doing this one thing and then becoming profitable one day. It's, it's more yeah. about the daily things that you do, right? Exactly. It, it adds up over time. It's like when you do sports, um, you just start slow and you build up and you build up and all these little things, they will add up to make a huge impact on your bottom line in trading eventually. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell us a little bit how it happened for you to become profitable and kind of what were the things that you did before that. And I know we've talked about it before a few times. We've hang out in Hong Kong, talked about that also. But what are these things that you've kept doing over time to become profitable? <clears throat> Definitely meditation. That helped me a lot. I do it two times a day, 20 minutes. Um, I... I started it, then I stopped, then I started it. I didn't feel the immediate effects and so on. And now I've been doing it for quite some time and it's just amazing. Like I, I track it in my journal. Did I meditate today or not? And the results are actually visible, right? So if, if I filter for I did meditate today and then I filter for all the trading sessions that had the same market condition, my results are much better if I meditated before um, a trading session so that is really one huge impact on the bottom line and at psychoda for example he's also a huge fan of meditation paul tudor jones too i think they have said it in various interviews so that's really something you can do right now 
10 minutes each morning or before you trade and it will have a positive effect not only on trading but also on your on your life in general besides that of course you have to use a trading journal that's like uh, no trading journal no money yeah of course <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have i have met one trader in my life who is trading without a journal and making money but that's one out of thousands okay there's always an exception to the rule so yeah. you're not going to be the exception right don't be arrogant so you need a trading journal but um, i'm pretty sure even that trader is doing something to review or to track at some point no um he's he's doing it in a very um he's doing it in his in his mind of course he's reviewing his trades but he looks at the trades without writing down any notes right i think maybe he has a photographic memory i don't know how he does it mm. <laughs> works for him <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yeah. one of the things that really helped me to become better in trading to like really fast in the time it took me to to improve is to yes like journal write things down but also to review every week or every month or every quarter yes. so I'm, I'm guessing you do that as well so what is your review process right now and how often what do you do what do you look at do you write something how does that happen i, I use um edgewonk my own product so i'm biased of course but it's uh it's, <laughs> yeah, it's based to, on <laughs> it's based on my own personal journal which i was using before so i'm very happy with the product and I use that for reviewing and I <clears throat> if I'm day trading I review it after the session right after the session I directly input my trades into Edgewonk I review them I write down uh, some notes um, about which which lessons I learned today we have a session function in Edgewonk so I can write down in the session of 19th January I learned these and these lessons da -da -da. That's what I do after day trading. And for my swing trading, I do it once a week on the weekend. I prepare for the next week. And I also review the last week because my positions, they are like a few months. So I only have to work on that trading style on the weekend. And um, yeah, just put your trades into your journal, review them, learn your lesson, and maybe adjust for the next session if there's anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love it. And uh, so I didn't look at the lesson in Hedgehog. That's pretty cool. That's pretty flexible and fast. If you can write everything and see each other at the same time, that's pretty cool. Love it. Yes. Now, I guess maybe you've been in that situation before where like everything seems to go wrong. Like you have a really, really bad week that <laughs> you lose on most of your trade, or let's say every trade if that happens. And some people in the institution right now, so what would you tell them to do? um i mean i'm in that situation right uh, now too uh, last week was a nightmare for stocks yeah. uh, because i i went long quite a few positions and they got all clobbered i was saved by a few short positions so it's it's not that bad right but uh, still it was <laughs> it was frustrating of course and as trading always is and what i do in situations like these is i talk to fellow traders um how how they have experienced that week it always like it always helps the to know that you're not alone in the boat other other people i talked to they got destroyed last week as well so <laughs> i didn't do anything wrong yeah <laughs> at yeah. least not much right and um besides that i i do review my journal i look at my equity curve and i look at the last 500 trades and i see a positive tendency or a very nicely uh, upskewed curve and then i remember that the last 10 trades are really just a drop on the on the, uh, in the barrel drop of water in the barrel is nothing yeah. right it's like just a small dent and when you look at your whole trading history it's like nothing which is yeah, yeah and, and i've been in worse drawdowns before it's just what what is most frustrating to me is the time right i don't really think in categories of money mm -hmm. i think in categories of time which i also learned recently from from um another trader who is doing it as well and uh, it's just frustrating to lose two or three weeks of time um right, right. don't don't really care about the money yeah. that's interesting and so if you have any question comment below in the chat we want to make sure that or i think it's on this side I want to make sure people, we ask questions tomorrow because that's how you learn the most. 
And the best app we have are always the one where people ask questions, they're engaged, and they comment on whatever topic we talk about. And so I'm good to know about that uh, topic you talked about, thinking in terms of time. How did you start that, and why do you do this? Is it good or bad? or? Um, it started actually when I was playing poker. Uh, I played poker a few years mm-hmm. professionally, and it started because in poker you really have to put in the time, same like day trading, six hours a day, you just sit there and then the most frustrating thing to me was always you didn't make any progress today or you even lost progress today if I lost money, right? In any other uh, endeavor, whatever effort you put in, no matter how shitty that effort is, you still make progress. <laughs> yeah. But in trading is like you can do everything right, but you still are losing progress time and that that's how i started thinking about it and that was also the thing that was most frustrating to me i never really cared about the money i always cared about is the thing i'm doing here does it make sense regarding to my time because i only have 80 years on this planet <clears throat> 90 if i'm lucky and i don't want to waste uh, hours days weeks on something which doesn't give me any return right yeah, that, and that's pretty much the reason why I don't day trade because it takes too much time and I wouldn't <laughs> be able to do everything I do if I were to day trade. Yeah, so, that's also yeah. the reason why I'm, I'm slowly moving away from it because the uh-huh. older you get, the more valuable time becomes. And okay. um, while I loved it, the last 10 years, I just love to sit in front of my computer and look at charts. It, this uh, passion is slowly waning and I'm becoming more interested in, in longer term trading um, simply for for the reason also that my true passion has always been numbers and it doesn't really matter whether I day trade or swing trade, I still get the numbers, I can analyze, I can correct myself and so on, but with much less time effort. Mm-hmm. And that's a cool kind of path, so how do you think about going in that transition of from day trading to swing trading because you already swing traded before right it's maybe going to be more now so how do you plan to transition to swing trading um well i will i'm still day trading from time to time Uh um now three days a week instead of five before and i created a strategy i followed the same process i followed when i was day trading i looked at the charts i looked at other traders, what they are doing. I looked at um, my own book of tricks because obviously you can't do what everyone else is doing. And then I started testing. I I created various um, strategies on different markets and um, I tested them, put the trades into my journal, saw what works and what didn't, and slowly, slowly created a strategy out of these uh, things. It took me two years, roughly. And then I started getting more and more traction in that trading style. And then I traded only three days instead of five days. And I'm now um, doing swing trading, position trading on the weekend, where I prepare for the next week. And slowly, slowly, I want to move all my assets into that trading style. Yeah. Nice. That, that, that's pretty cool. And the process is always the same. It's always backtesting, reviewing the stats, and then going to... Always the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would be your best tip for people who either don't have a strategy now, they want to create something, or they need to backtest like ASAP to get the result, to be confident to trade? Do you have any tips for them? Um, what I would do is... Um, First, look at as many trading strategies as possible, but look at them not from a standpoint of how much money can I make with it or how much money is the creator making with it, but more like, um, does this click with me? Does this make sense? Um, Because then you can make progress much faster. If it clicks with you, you can trade a strategy much, much easier. And then you, you take those rules from from the creator or whatever, and you backtest them, and you see whether they work or not. And if they don't work, but you still like the system, you make adjustments, but you make them step by step, right? Uh, Each 30 trades roughly, that's the number from statistics. After 30 trades roughly, you get a meaningful um, sample size. 
then you change one little thing you uh, maybe um, use a different take profit or stop loss strategy for example don't um, don't fiddle too much with the entries try to fix your trade management first and see whether you can create an edge out of that and then you just adjust the take profits first then you adjust your stop losses first and you slowly slowly um, create a strategy out of that which then will become your own after 500 600 700 trades love it and you mentioned something pretty interesting which is you take it from the creator and then you backtest it so why yeah. is that why wouldn't you like if someone shares it to you why wouldn't you trade it right away live and go and make tons of money because i don't trust anyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, not even my friends like um i wouldn't trust them if they gave me a strategy and said yo this is the money printer 2000 so no way even if it was like I, I could see the equity curve i still have to see it for myself yeah. i can only trade a strategy if i trust it 100 and i can only trust it 100 if i did the tests myself and i looked at the results yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think more simply said i think you just developed kind of a different mindset when you see your result and you know exactly yeah. like what you've done in the back of saying what happens and yes. I guess it's the only way to feel 100% confident. You can feel confident about something when you see other people doing it, but you don't feel 100% confident yourself. And that's like that's a big gap in trading. Exactly. Yes. Especially when you go into a drawdown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Speaking of drawdown, how do you handle them? Drawdowns. I handle them. Um, so what I do is when I have um, when I have a database of trades, say 500 trades or so. I uh, look at uh, the biggest drawdown I had during those 500 trades. And then I also do Monte Carlo on those trades. So basically what Monte Carlo does is reshuffle the trades in a random um, fashion. So when you get a drawdown of $500, or your maximum drawdown, um, the sequence of trades is never fixed. It's totally random, right? So I reshuffle all the trades a thousand times with Monte Carlo. You can do that in Excel with a bit of uh, skill. And then you get the, the very likely most maximum drawdown in the future because as the saying goes, your worst drawdown is always in front of you. <laughs> and um, as long as I don't reach this Monte Carlo drawdown, I keep trading, right? Mm -hmm. No problem for me. No. And once I exceed that drawdown, which never happened yet, but it might in the future, I have a trading stop and um, I will um, review my strategy and see what went wrong. But until then, I just keep trading and doing what I do. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. We have a quick, quick question in the chat. If you have any other question, comment below for sure, and we'll make sure to answer them. Whatever you can learn from Morris or from me, I think that's always good. And there's a lot that you can ask or learn and we'll do our best to uh, help you out with that question here from gregory uh what is your ideal setup my ideal setup <laughs> um that would be a strong uptrend um and then you get a flat top triangle it's a very reliable pattern and um so a flat top triangle looks like you have a horizontal upper barrier and an upsloping trend line on the bottom of the pattern and you need three hits on the top three hits on the trend line if it everything works out perfect and the upper barrier cannot be um, uh, stepped too much so uh, if it's very clean and then you get a nice breakout on high volume that's a very very reliable pattern and often it exceeds the chart pattern target by a lot so that is um, that is my favorite setup right now for swing trading and of course, there are other um, things that play into um, position sizing. Then, if the stock has uh, the company behind the stock has uh, good sales and earnings numbers, for example, I would bet a bit more on that trade. But that's basically my perfect setup right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how about forex? Would you apply the same thing to the forex market, or um, I think it's in the futures, no? <laughs> Yeah, yeah um, both Forex and Futures. Um, I trade patterns as well in a day trading strategy, but it's, uh, it's uh, 
different. It's more proprietary. Um, in stocks, you can basically trade if you have a criteria list which is very strict. You can trade the patterns in vanilla conversion and uh, still working, right? Uh, in forex or in futures, the markets move differently, and of course, day trading the um, markets are much more efficient. In my opinion, you need to um, you need to adapt a bit um, different style and do something which not everyone is doing. But basically, it would be a strong drive up into a um, consolidation and then a break out of that consolidation. So a little bit like a flag uh, formation, but more more filters and more um, conditions apply. Yeah. Cool. Love it. A uh, question here from Observer. Uh, Observer. I'm having trouble developing my strategy. I usually do well day trading into maybe two days as a counter trend trader, but I feel that using a single strategy is limiting my opportunities. What can you comment on that? So, so um, you mean you want to have more trades? Or? Yeah. So that person is using only like one strategy right now, and he mm. feels like that would be limiting his opportunities to trade because like you have less trades. So how would you combine this? Because so, you trade only one thing or many strategies right now. <sighs> Yeah, so as a manual trader, um, as a hand trader, um, it's difficult trading multiple strategies, in my opinion, um, because your brain will mix up a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and <sorry. laughs> especially if you are a visual trader, you try to recognize patterns. Your brain will burn these patterns slowly, slowly into your uh, <clears throat> lizard brain or whatever and it will make it much easier for you to recognize the profitable patterns so that's the discretionary part and i think the discretionary part of um day traders or manual traders is most often the part which makes them profitable right because if you were trading a hundred percent mechanical system you could just code it quickly and um, be done with it so you have to be very careful with trading multiple systems. I can do it because I have traded my day trading system for many years and it's just second nature to me. If you are just starting out, stick with one strategy and um, stick to that until you have perfected it. And then you can look at other areas as well. I mean, of course, um, if you look at Harry Markowitz's books, for example, um, portfolio uh, creation, um, more strategies is always better because you can achieve the same returns with lower drawdowns. So your equity curve will become much smoother. But that is more for systematic traders, uh, algorithmic traders. And um, for manual traders, one strategy is pretty much enough for 99% of people. Yeah. And I was told by a trader who trades like quite a, quite a big amount of money for other people mm. that like he only trades one setup. That's the only thing he trades. But he's gonna trade it like on different time frame, different instrument, because it's much easier for him to just execute the same setup all the time. It's like automatic all the time, as opposed to having like all these things he set up like with the R side. It's one with this. It's one with that, and it hmm. makes like a whole mess. So, but yeah. I, I think that's, that's where I prefer myself too. But yeah, you can go with two different paths, I guess. Mm. That's actually a good point. You can use one setup and trade it on different time frames. You can add um, diversification to your portfolio only by doing that. That's actually a good point. Yeah, I haven't thought about that yet. <laughs> yeah, love it. Cool. Good ideas here. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, my head is pretty much fried right now. Cool. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, wonderful. We had a question about volume. Do you use volume in Forex as well or only in stocks? No, not in Forex. I use it in stocks, yes. Um, in stocks, if I get a perfect pattern and a nice breakout, I don't care about the volume. I use volume then for position sourcing only. If I get volume with the breakout, I will bet bigger. But I will still take the trade if I get a low volume breakout. In Forex, simply for the known reasons, um, decentralized market over the counter is just it doesn't make sense in my opinion, right? I, I have looked at um, different brokers, their price feeds and their volume feeds. And if you stick with a few of the big ones, that was quite interesting actually, because they had very similar volume and um, price patterns. 
if you go to the smaller ones <laughs> you're basically trading uh you're basically trading a micro ecosystem yeah. <laughs> which doesn't make you and sense. 500 people yeah <laughs> yeah exactly cool yeah yeah that's, that's a problem okay yeah. i want to hear a little bit about your productivity techniques and we talk about to-do lists which are really, really helpful but mm -hmm. how do you combine all these things you want like, like two companies edge one can trade side plus mm -hmm. you have to trade you have to look at the chart how do you combine all this do you have any trick for people who want to become more productive yeah get up early <laughs> get, up, get up at 5 a.m like uh seriously it's one of the best things i've ever done in my life is to get up at 5 a.m work until 2 p.m and then everything you don't get done before 12 p.m is useless anyway to me at least because i'm a morning person and you can get so much done in those three hours from 5 a.m to 8 a.m until other people wake up it's yeah. amazing uh, i i can get much more done uh, during that time and i use a technique called pomodoro mm -hmm. which might be uh, known to some people pomodoro is uh, italian for tomato i think and basically what you do is you cut the tomato into four pieces four quarters and then in, in, in productivity, it looks like 25 minutes. So you work for 25 minutes, then a five minute break, another 25 minutes, five minute break. You do that four times. You put a big 15 minute break at the end, and then you do that again. That way you can, one thing is really important, uh, the negative effects of sitting. So sitting is the new smoking, right? Uh, you can, I'm still smoking though. <laughs> you can, uh, if you get up, five minutes every 25 minutes walk around and take a break the negative effects of sitting will be almost um, zero uh, you can refresh your brain and you can you can then work more productive again after those 25 minutes so uh, after those five minute breaks so I use 12 Pomodoro so I work 12 times 25 minutes and I have to get everything done in those 12 slots anything else i don't get done in those 12 slots will be pushed to tomorrow so i need to be very very effective and efficient and that is another point you have to be very effective before you are efficient right because you can be very efficient at doing something which is useless so you first have to find out which things you do are the most effective and then do those in the most efficient way Powerful. And that's the thing I've done a lot back home in Canada, but not while traveling. So it's interesting you bring it back up. Probably something I have to, I have to implement myself. But I, <laughs> yeah, that's a really good idea. I love it. And how do you then schedule your trading time? And do you do you, do you just focus on trading or do you do, you do something else on the side? No, no. When I'm trading, I'm 100% in the charts. Like mm -hmm. That's the only way it works. Right? Um, I schedule my trading time well for, for swing trading simply on Saturdays. Um, morning I get up I do my scans I do my watch list um, I do the uh, watch this video for our members and that's it for day trading I have to be there one hour before the New York open I only trade the New York session these days I have to be there one hour before the New York open until London close roughly and I only trade during that time nothing else yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is a good, also good topic because you change time zone. So, and you've, I think <laughs> always traded the U S open, right? Yeah. So how do you manage this when, well, I guess you just adapt your schedule to that, right? Yeah. Um, the reason why, um, I'm doing the U S session is because it's, it's easier for me with the time zones. Exactly. That's the point. Um, when I'm in Asia, it's evening, eight, 9 PM. When I'm in Europe, it's like 3 PM and I don't uh, go to any other time zones. So anywhere in between is not a problem. If I would move to America now, then I would have a problem because depending on the coast I am, I would have to get up at 5 a.m. or so, which simply I can't trade in the morning. It doesn't work, okay? My brain is, is I can't. So <laughs> I had to choose a trading session in the afternoon. Um, so I can get all my work done in the morning then I can relax and then I trade, right? That's one of the main reasons why I chose the US session. Yeah. Cool, cool. I want to get to something that, like a little bit more advanced, some techniques that you have, but before we have Sasson FX, 
what is your entry system and what time frame do you recommend for, I guess, new traders or aspiring traders? Mm, for new traders, the, the risk reward for day traders is quite low uh, or quite high. Um, the risk is really high and the reward is very low. So you risk being the time you put in and the reward being that you become profitable, which is quite unrealistic, especially if you have a day job as well. Like you work for the whole day, uh, you come home at night, you still need to trade three, four hours. It's not going to work, especially if you still have a family and so on. So for newer traders, four hours daily, that's the way to go. That's what I think, right? And then you can also spend much more time for studying because that's what you should be doing in the beginning. Uh, you should spend much more time studying than trading. And when you're day trading, you just will spend a lot more time trading rather than studying, <laughs> which is a problem because there is no learning by doing in, in trading. You have to really do your homework. Um, what my entry, what my entry style is, is uh, basically I'm a I'm a breakout trader, right, with the trend. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Love it, love it. When you say studying and <clears throat> becoming better, what does that mean? Does that mean reading a book? Does that mean watching videos? Does that mean pick, picking up like Bloomberg and looking at the news? <laughs> what, so what does that mean? That's a nah. question. No Bloomberg. <laughs> 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 No, nah, um, studying is research, research about your own trading style uh, in your journal, um, reading books, yes, but only um, the good ones. Um, that That's quite hard in the beginning because you don't really know what is good is that, and there are a lot of shitty books out there. I don't learn a lot these days from books I read. Most of them, I only read the first 10, 15 pages in trading and throw them away. Um, yeah, but I think the most important studying you can do is research about your own strategy and your own trading style and, um, play around with your journal. Like what would have happened if in the past I would always bet 1% on each trade? What would happen if I always exited, uh, uh, if the price went below the 20 moving average, stuff like that. Just play around with your journal. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, I think that's a good advice for sure. I love it. If you have any other questions, comment in the chat and I keep repeating myself, but that's super useful. If you want to ask okay. Moritz anything, we'll make sure to answer and to uh, look at your questions. So where I want to go now is I know you've been trading longer than I've been trading. And so what I'm curious to know is like when you get to a certain level of experience, how do you keep becoming better and making sure you don't fall to be kind of average? Are there things that you, do, that you keep working on or things you keep doing? Or what does that look like? Make sure you keep growing and moving forward. Yeah. Um, for on a, on a meta level, important is like a lot of people, they become complacent once they hit profitability. Yeah, or yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I see a lot. Like people that they become profitable, they kind of stop. And some people, they, they fail and they stop trading at some point. So <laughs> I think that's a big uh, challenge, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You need to be, it's a never ending uphill battle. That's trading simply right and for me the problem always was uh, once i mastered a strategy and i found it to be profitable and i thought uh, i felt like all right now you can print money with this strategy um, i lost interest in it right because that was always my problem for anything i if i mastered something i would lose interest in it <laughs> because I'm always here for the challenge and learning you. I'm always curious. Um, what you have to keep doing is the framework. You need to work out, you need to eat, sleep healthy and so on, because all those things have a huge effect on your bottom line. And it's, it's a very fragile um, construct. And if one thing um, has a problem, then your trading will suffer a lot. So if, I mean, Let's be honest, trading is a peak performance activity and you need to be at peak performance all the time or you simply cannot trade, especially day trading. Um, so what I did with this problem I had um, of um, always wanting to master new stuff is that I simply um, got a friend on board who is an algorithmic trader and I'm telling him all the ideas I have. <laughs> 
test this, test that, and so on. And let me know the results. And of course, he gets new ideas from me because he's purely trading alg algorithmic. So he needs new ideas to feed his um, style all the time. And I can test new ideas and learn new things about the market at the same time while still trading my old boring strategy. Yeah. Love it. That's a good advice. And that's also something I've been do starting to do as well. So it's interesting. <laughs> Testing what we're in, I love it. And are you gonna trade those things, or is it just for purely fun? <clears throat> we are definitely planning on um, moving more and more into algorithmic trading uh -huh. mm, because um, my my biggest passion has always been numbers, um, data sets. I wouldn't care whether it's a time series of the Apple stock or of uh, guinea pigs mortality rate. <laughs> uh, it's just interesting to see the. Um, correlations and insights you can get out of that and that has always been my biggest passion plus creativity i love thinking about new things and looking at the markets and testing stuff so that is definitely the biggest passion i have in trading so we are thinking about moving more and more in into algorithmic trading yeah interesting for sure question here from observer uh so is, is having ups and down in the trading, I guess, PNL. He's asking, what account did you both start up with and have blown up before if you blew up an account? <laughs> it depends on your depends on your cost of living, right? Yeah. Do you have a family? In which country do you live? What is your style of living? Um, make a calculation. Um, I have a simple Excel file where I have all my fixed costs. I have my um, my monthly um, cost of living and everything is in there. And then I simply look at what I need each month. And um, then I backward engineer basically um, how much money I need, how much returns I need to make each year on that money. And then you double those numbers. <laughs> that's yeah. how you get your account. <laughs> that's, good. Yeah. that's really good advice. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to end up at the month where like flush on the exact number with your account and stuff and that. No, no it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially if you have a losing month or yeah. losing week, whatever. That, that's a great advice. Uh, someone says zero is going down. Okay, wonderful. I have a <laughs> short and euro, I think, but that's fine. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. So any other questions for Moritz? You guys comment in the chat. We want to make sure that we answer your question. Is there anything more it's, oh, that you would like to pass on to people? Anything that they have to learn about? or I would say what helped me the most in trading and in, um, in my personal life or in my professional life as well is I was always a perfectionist. And that doesn't help at all. <laughs> so once I recognized um, that I have to stop being a perfectionist, um, everything took off it was really amazing it's like just i'm i'm pretty sure most of you have tried a diet before or tried to be um very consistent with one thing you started out you're highly motivated and then you stop uh one day you fail one day everyone fails right and no one is a machine i mean just doesn't happen everyone fails and then you just destroyed a perfect diet, for example. You dieted for 20 days. You One day you go on a binge and you eat 500 marshmallows. And then you, you feel like you failed. You destroyed a perfect diet and you stop. And that's exactly where you should keep going because everyone fails. And real success is made the day after you fucked up. right? So no one is perfect. And don't be a perfectionist. Just keep going steady, 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 step by step. And um, don't worry too much about the little drawdowns, ups and downs, and so on. Yeah, yeah th that's some awesome advice. And I I'm also definitely perfectionist. And so I stop also myself to, like, before I was trying to find the perfect strategy with the peak profit, which <laughs> like, everyone wants to find. But once you start with <laughs> that kind of lower return, that are maybe going to be more consistent, it's, yeah, yeah, everything changed and it's a different game. Yeah. And that works um, in everything in life, I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, Bob Pardo, like he, he developed something perfect profit, uh, which basically calculates the what, how much profit you would make if you would enter exactly at the swing points. And the best strategies, the best strategies are like capturing 
five, 10, 15 percent of those moves in the market. So there are billions to be made in the market, but you obviously, but you will always only capture capture a very small fraction of that. Uh, you just have to be aware of that. Yeah, and that's part of life and trading, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Cool. The other thing I want you to talk about is I've had the red barrels a few weeks ago. Talk mm -hmm. about the I think so. Is it scenario optimizer or scenario tester in Edge Wonk? I thought it was pretty cool. Can you tell people how that works and kind of what can you do with this? Well, you can um, basically in Edge Wonk, um, it it will extrapolate your um, performance into the future from your current performance, and then you can see the expectation corridor. So um, if you're trading with a two to one risk reward and a fifty percent win rate, then um, that's that's I mean stellar uh, strategy. And then you put that into Edge Wonk, and it extrapolates into the future. You can see that best case you will make three hundred thousand dollars after five hundred trades. Worst case you will make twenty thousand dollars after three hundred trades, after five hundred trades. And then you, uh, it will be much easier for you to follow your plan because you know you, that your expectation is somewhere between those uh, in in that corridor, and will help you stick to your strategy. Yeah. I think that's that's brilliant. And the other thing I was talking about as well, I think it's the uh, the fact that you can see like what happens if you exit a little bit later or a little bit earlier. So how does that work? That's pretty cool, I think. Yeah, you can you can test different strategies um, depending on the same exit. So you can, for example, say what would have happened if in the past for all my trades I would have exited at two risk reward ratio, or you can track any condition you want. Yeah and then see how that would affect uh, your equity curve. And at the same time, you can also filter out um, trades, for example, uh, by day of week, or uh, you can also create custom stats, uh, how you slept last night. <laughs> you can track anything you want and then try to find correlations between um, those uh, patterns. Of course, spurious correlations could be there too if you um, if you go a bit too crazy about it. But the good thing about Edgewong is that we put everything into a very clear and concise framework. So we took care of that for you mostly that you don't track too many, too much data and just data snooping, right? And you, you try to find correlations where there are none. Yeah, so, so with Edgewong, you can look at your strategy and smoothen out your equity curve, um, stop taking the bad trades, see where you're leaking money, take only the better ones. And that's what it's all about, yeah. It's really cool. So those are things you didn't know about at all, but they, they really <laughs> you want to go to Ashwank, I think. I'll, I'll have to uh, <laughs> maybe go back to it. Really, really cool. Love it. And we also have a discount code for Ashwank. If you guys want, want to grab it, link to me below. Maybe you can tell people what that's about a little bit more. What are the features, the benefits, why people should use that type of journal, as opposed to a typical like Excel journal. Yeah. Um, well, everyone should use a journal. We established that. And then the point is that um, Rolf and me, we basically we put our own journals, which have been time proven, um, together and created Edgewonk out of that. So really, all the metrics, all the statistics in Edgewonk, they are designed to really improve your trading. It's not some hocus pocus, black magic voodoo. Um, it's just you look at the stats and you know where you are leaking money and you can save tons of time. I mean, developing your own Excel journal, which is doable. And I love Excel, it's a great product. Um, you can do that, but you can save a lot of time. And at the same time, Edgewong is steering you into the right direction uh, when it comes to journaling, because yeah, there are millions of stats you can track <laughs> in trading. Many of them are quite useless. Um, so you have to find out yourself what stats you want to track or you simply um, come to us and um, have everything taken care of for you and you can concentrate on your trading and your journaling ex uh, instead of sitting hundreds of hours in front of Excel. Yeah. yeah, love it. And it makes the whole process much clearer and much easier, I think. Yes, of course. We have a trader development program as well. Uh, which comes with Edgewonk if uh, if you want. And um, it basically shows you how to integrate Edgewonk into your routine, how to establish a routine, how to go about journaling, 
um, all the concepts behind edge wong so it will make you a much more organized and in that regard more professional trader which will in itself also give you an edge over other people because 80 percent 90 percent of people out there they are so unorganized it's a nightmare right? yeah yeah love it and that's great that people have this opportunity to set things up be organized and hopefully uh survive the long term in trading so guys <laughs> links will be below we have a discount code i think dtt20 that we set up for edge wrong so you guys want to have a good discount on that it's going to be for the viewers of this video and there's no this kind of not below it's going to be so if you watch this you'll know the discount code let's keep it simple <laughs> yeah click <laughs> link below and you have a discount code dtt20 right yes. uh morris do you have a degree in mathematics a question sorry do you have a degree in mathematics i have a degree in philosophy <laughs> interesting <laughs> Yeah, um, in philosophy, there is some uh, logic involved. Um, yeah, basically you have to um, take a class in logic, which is the same class informatics people are taking or mathematicians. And uh, I also studied uh, educational psychology on the side. There was a lot of statistics in there. And from that side, I realized that my passion is really uh, about numbers. Um, so I got slowly into it. I, I was even thinking about becoming an accountant for some time, <laughs> simply because I love working with Excel so much <laughs> and, and numbers. But uh, I think big data and algorithmic trading are uh, a bit better paid than accounting, especially because accounting will be um, taken over by AI soon anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's also a different game. You'll have the same lifestyle. Yes. Which I think you want to have as well. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> I did a video about that a couple of days ago, but what are the best and worst part of the Fox trader or trader in general lifestyle, in your opinion? The, the worst part of the Forex trader lifestyle is um, the social life, I would say. Like, uh, but that comes hand in hand, right? Because you have a lot of freedom on here and you have a lot of freedom here but this freedom uh, makes you become an uh, like living alone and the other one the other freedom enables you to travel all around the world and uh, be your own boss so those are really the best and, and the worst thing about trading yeah. Perfect. you can't have one without the other yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah which is something i get to discover over time as well but it's interesting <laughs> very interesting Theodore says, what do you think of hedging? Hedging? Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, what did that one guy say? Diversification is for idiots. <laughs> I don't know who said that, but hedging is for idiots too. I mean, I don't want to be uh, <laughs> too insulting, but if you, why would you hedge if you, if you, um, uh, if, if you are trading a stock portfolio, okay, and you are following the classic hedging uh, theories, okay, there is some merit to it. If you are a Forex trader with a small account, no, I don't I don't see any merit to it. Yeah, uh, the thing is that a lot of people who, who, who use hedging have no stop loss and they want to kind yeah. of balance things out. And but so if you protect your risk in different ways, I think you don't need to edge for a reason. Yeah, I, I, I was part of a trading group for some time which used hedging to circumvent the margin call, which was interesting and worked quite well for some people, but eventually um, the accounts got busted. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cool. How can people find you if they want to connect with you or reach out after the podcast? And we have a lot going on, so feel free to... Uh, uh, you can find me things. on Twitter. So my, my Twitter handle is stocktcm all written in together, stock TCM, or you can shoot me an email at moritz at edgewonk.com. Nice, nice. And edgewonk.com is going to be a place where everything is described about the software. Plus, I have a link yes, below. Exactly. And that's, that's going to be yes. good. So any advice you would like to leave people with? I know it's been 45 minutes plus, so now 55 minutes, wow. So any advice you have for people as the last <laughs> advice? Um, yeah, <laughs> always uh, make sure that um, 
I'm, I know it sounds like a cliche, but if you're only in trading for the money, it's not going to work. On the other hand, there are so many careers in trading that almost everyone can find something that fits their passion, right? If, if your passion is not being a day trader, maybe your passion is being an analyst or whatever. There are so many career paths in trading that if you are in it for the money, better look for a career path inside of trading that fits your passions and you will do much better. Love it. Kind of, kind of froze a little bit, but yeah. So do you have any, let's say, advice for like, so, so what are the different kind of field or job you would see in trading apart from analysts? There are so many, man. I mean, you can you can also work uh, as an accountant first for a hedge fund. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, anything you you can become a, a prop trader. You can work uh, at the exchange. You can work as an IT specialist in in a hedge fund. You can do statistics, big data. There are so many options, and uh, yeah, I know for many uh, positions. People say you need a master or a PhD or five years of experience, but simply cold call, call, right? Simply send them an email, uh, tell them what you can do, and um, uh, scout for positions on the internet. There are plenty of options. Um, yeah. yeah. And the other cool thing is that you get to learn from these people who do the trading or whatever as well at the same yeah. time. So, exactly, like, exactly. Right. Mario, thanks a lot for, for being on the channel. It's been a pleasure to have you here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> That's great.